All right, so Evelyn asked whether I recommend the TikTok style videos for Instagram reels. And I would even say for Facebook stories, right? Same thing. Um, I think that whatever you can do that is authentic to you, that communicates a meaningful message that is filtering in your ideal clients is great. Uh, so, but the, but that's the challenge is that with such a short video, which TikToks are short videos, can you communicate a meaningful enough message that filters in your ideal clients versus draws the masses who are probably not your ideal clients? And you might say, George, what's wrong with that? Wouldn't I just want, and not just by the, by the way, not just Instagram reels, you can also do YouTube shorts. YouTube shorts are sub you know, under one minute videos on YouTube. George, why wouldn't I just want tons of people following me? Why not? Like if I can make an entertaining dance video, look at this little caption. Look at that caption. Boom. Look at this, you know, whatever. I'm not a good dancer. So it's like, George, I disagree. You're an amazing dancer. Every time I've seen you dance, you're amazing. You know? um, so why wouldn't I do that on YouTube and Instagram and and uh, Facebook and Twitter too, and even link, even LinkedIn. Why not? You LinkedIn can do short videos. So why not? Is because when you gather a mass audience that isn't your ideal audience, you now have the problem of reaching the ideal people within your mass audience, and the algorithm will not be friendly to you, uh, nor will ads be friendly to you. So what I mean is this. Let's say you don't run ads. Let's say you're just depending on the algorithm. Great. Okay. You're trying to get free, free, uh, in, free attention through the algorithm. All right. You have an entertaining TikTok video, right? And you, you get a lot of people following you because you're so entertaining. And then you start talking about things that matter to your offerings. And then the, mass, the masses go, what the heck is this? I'm not, it's, this is not, unless you can make your offerings really entertaining. And still, if the offering is really entertaining, you get a bunch of people going to your website and then they drop off and that bounce, that high bounce rate might actually have a negative effect on your SEO possibly, or at least it might, and it might have a negative effect on the social media algorithm. If they see the social media platform sees people bouncing back from the website very quickly, they're like, something's wrong here. They're bouncing back very quickly. So in other words, whether we're talking about social media algorithms or, or you know, Google you know, search engine algorithms, bounce, quick bounce backs, meaning people going to your site and go, mm, not for me, coming back, is not good for your, for your algorithmic presence. Meaning it's not, they won't benefit, they won't, they won't want to feature more of your stuff in the algorithm. So this is why I'm very careful to, <laughs> I'm very, <laughs> I'm very careful to only be entertaining when I'm talking about the things that are filtering in my ideal audience. I'm very careful not to entertain for the sake of entertainment because I'm drawing in the wrong people. Now, let's now, we've talked about organic traffic. Let's now talk about what if you use ads, right? Using ads means you have a warm audience and a cool audience. Great. Cool audience are people who don't know who you are. Warm audience are people who have engaged with you in some way, including watching three seconds of your video. That's counting a warm audience on Instagram and Facebook. So if someone has watched three seconds or the whole video where you're really entertaining and they're like, oh, what a cool entertaining person. Now they're following you. Now they're engaged with you. Now you're running warm audience ads. People, you're reaching people who have, you know, who have engaged with you in some way. Now you have a large warm audience because lots and lots of people have engaged with your entertaining video. Now you have, are spending a lot of money every time reaching a warm audience many of whom are not your ideal people. This is why I have the ironic or, conf or confounding strategy of being boring to my cool audience. Weird, but it works. Now, I'm not, I'm not trying to be boring, but I'm certainly not trying to entertain more than whatever is naturally entertaining with my carousel posts on Instagram. It's not that entertaining, but the message itself, uh, the message itself filters in the right people if they are already thinking about that problem. If that problem matters to them, 
right? Whatever problem I'm talking about in that carousel post or whatever idea is not for the mainstream, but it's for my ideal, like the mainstream people I hope will just keep scrolling. And people who are not my ideal audience, I hope they keep scrolling. I hope they don't engage and swipe because if they don't engage, good. At least they're not right for me. I don't have a larger one audience that I have to spend money reaching out to. Anyway, so I hope this makes sense. And uh, this is why, and also I'm too lazy to learn how to dance. <laughs> too lazy. Also, I'm, I'm also too lazy to do the video editing where I'm like, all right, pause. My, my finger went there now. I got to pause and put that caption there. My finger went there. Now I got to pause and put that caption. I'm too lazy for that shit. I'm too lazy. Uh, but I'm not lazy in creating carousel posts because I just cut and paste various paragraphs. That's not, that's not hard to do. That's easy to do. So video editing is, I'm too lazy for that. But <laughs> so I hope this helps the benefit. But however, I mean, I, I could see somebody who has a mass audience type of brand. Um, you know, for example, if you have a mass audience strategy, like for example, uh, Sean Galanos, you know, um, uh, one of my buddies uh, has a massive following on Instagram and TikTok. And, and, and interestingly, he said he's stop, he's going to stop using TikTok. It might be for this reason. I don't know. But he has a massive following on various social media. And his strategy is a mass, mass audience strategy because he talks about relationships and love. And he, 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 he's trying to get a TV deal, television deal. And so he needs a massive audience to get a television deal. Uh, and he also sells courses. I don't, I don't know how well his courses do in terms of the mass audience. Not super well, but you know enough. And he gets donations because he's so entertaining talking about relationship stuff that he actually gets thousands of dollars a month in donations consistently. Just donations. People are not trying to buy his stuff. Just Sean, love you. Uh, he, I don't. He has Patreon. Probably he has other ways of getting donations. But that's a common model these days. Is be so entertaining. You build a massive audience of whom a tiny, 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 tiny percentage love you enough to donate to you every month but it's tough because i tried that model and i wasn't entertaining enough sorry i wasn't um sean is much better looking than me and much more entertaining than me and you kind of have to be right and and a bunch of you here watching me here are <laughs> good looking and entertaining enough but i'm not so i just have to i'm only good just george you're beautiful to me. Thank you. I know. I know. But it's like you're like tiny, tiny percent of audience who think I'm beautiful. The mass audience don't. So it's really a different strategy. It really is. And, and if you are beautiful enough and entertaining enough, you might go with that strategy. But my complaint about, not my complaint, my, when I think about the Sean Galanow strategy of being beautiful and entertaining, which Sean is, I think about which he had to he had to deal with this. He gets so many direct messages. He gets so many messages coming at him all the time that he had to. I told him. I actually I told Sean. Hey Sean, looks like you have to create an, an auto response for your Instagram. And he did. And he doesn't love it either because every time I message Sean through Instagram, I get his auto response. So even his friends have to get his auto. And so it's like it, it's like you like when you get to that stage, you have to like have gatekeeper you know with the with the bots thankfully because i'm not using the mass audience strategy my audience grows but at a very sustainable pace where my audience is growing at the pace that my productivity skills are growing so i get i don't get too many emails as you know when you email me i get back to you my i my inbox is at zero almost every day and as my productivity skills grow, as my ability to, 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 to process information and process messages grows, so does my audience grow bit by bit. And so it's a beautiful model. In my, in my opinion, it's beautiful because it doesn't grow too fast. And yet I have enough. I have more than enough, really, in terms of sales and in terms of messages. But, but the messages comes just enough. So anyway, <laughs> it's kind of a philosophical answer, but it's what I've seen over the years. So I hope this helps. Tara, you uh, have some experience doing the, the TikTok thing, just as an experiment. Do you want to share? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I just want to caveat this with, I'm not an entertaining TikToker. I just decided I was going to do a, a normal, everyday, mm -hmm. typical mm -hmm. video. I sort of changed locations and then I just decided to do it for 30 seconds. So I've done two TikTok reels 
And I just compared it to two of my under 60 second videos. Instagram so, posts. Okay. So yeah, j- yes, my 60 second I uh, posts on Instagram. So one, one reel had um, 36 likes, three actions and reach of 872 accounts. It's a lot. One, one TikTok reel had... 32 likes, one action, and 1,505 accounts. And then my two non-TikTok TikTok reels, reels. Yeah. I mean, so just IGTV straight out, nine likes, right. one action, 114 accounts. Yeah. Seven likes, zero action, 124 yeah. accounts. Right. So... Yeah, no, this, to, it, reels This are is like almost at, Yeah, 10... at this time, at this time of this recording yeah. in 2021, uh, well, even before that, but probably in 2022 as well, Instagram is giving reels an extra boost of audience. So for sure, uh, if you make reels, you'll, you'll likely get more uh, traffic or more attention than you would with just regularly uploading a, an Instagram video or an IGTV video. It's true. Now, now yeah. when I look at the insights, it looks like because I hashtag my reels, right? And those hashtags seem to work pretty well. I've yep. investigated those. Yes, it looks like ninety percent of the accounts are coming from the hashtags. Ah, okay. So, which is, which is a so whole the, other discussion because I I don't love hashtag audiences um, because they're often not the right fit, but Maybe you are getting, I mean, hashtags, audiences need, you like need to like research, like, who am I actually reaching here? Because they're often not the right audience, but you, have you noticed that they are getting, you're getting good in like yeah, comments? I, yeah. Yeah. I've been getting, a lot of them are, um, you know, some of them are niche mates. Okay. Which, okay. Which yeah, is sure. Totally Why cool. not? Yeah. Which is potential totally collaborators, cool. you know? Yeah. yeah. And some of, some will comment and sh- I see people getting, people will tag other friends yes, in some yes. of my posts okay. and cool. will, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so it sounds promising for you, Tara. So I'm, I'm glad we're ending this segment with, with, you know, an alternative perspective because I, I don't feel like, I have the right answers to everything because I think that exp- I so believe in experimentation. So I'm really glad that you are experimenting. And those of you who are interested in reels, you should experiment with them. The key, as I was just talking about here, if you can study the type, if, you could, if it's possible to see who is liking it, uh, sometimes it's hard to know if it's coming from the hashtag audience or coming from the non hash you know, your regular audience. But if it's possible to to look at the profiles of the engagers of your of your reels or of your TikTok videos and see confirm, am I reaching the right people? That's what matters the most. So, yeah. Thank you. <laughs>